So good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. You know, I had a had a request for tonight. Um, a person asked if I would do an e-learning on um, entering position trades and how do I go about taking care of those, protecting and managing those positions. And I thought, you know, it's a good subject for tonight. And it's one of the things that I'm really becoming um, I, I've, I've traded position trades for a long time, but um, as I get older, I'm finding that more and more um, I want to gravitate to that little bit of a slower pace. Not because I'm admitting that I'm being old, is I just want to um, have more time to do the things that I want to do, and something that I don't have to monitor all the time so it's it's one of the things that um, I may someday move um, to that completely just so that I can have a little bit more free time in my life so um, anyone not know what a position trade is not seeing anyone asking what the heck is a position trade? Not sure. Um, try baby, it's um, a position trade can be uh, <clears throat> can be several things. It it kind of depends on you as an individual. So, for example, what I do for position trades, I'm looking at stocks that are in their weekly pattern. So, if I look at Pfizer here on a weekly I'm actually holding this and I've been holding this from down here okay so I've got a profit in this trade um, and I'm waiting to see if this trend is going to hold this right now is setting up a potential weekly rounded bottom breakout pattern <laughs> the swing trade that was just underwater. Yeah, a lot of people um, <clears throat> end up, that's how they end up holding longer term holds. It, they just didn't, uh, didn't cut it loose when they should have cut it loose on the swing trade. So the position trade is looking at a longer term position. Now for me, I use a weekly chart, but um, I've actually trained folks that um, a lady that spends they spend a lot of time on the road doing things and I trained um, her on using three day charts because she felt more comfortable with a three day chart versus a weekly chart she just wanted to slow it down a little bit and not too much and since then has not looked back has been successful in her trading uh, by slowing things down and really enjoys the traveling that she gets to do um, and the things by doing um, that little bit slower version of a trade. And <clears throat> I can tell you guys, it's it's not it's not rocket science. There's nothing um, fancy about it. You, if you take a look at um, Disney right now, not diamonds, Disney. Disney, you can see, could be coming up through, getting close to coming up through a weekly 50. And that possibility that this could have a pretty substantial long-term run to the upside just to recover what happened here. And I can show you from an old trade, this right over here was an entry into Disney. And you can see, look at this chart. It's not unfamiliar with what this is, right? Coming up made a rounded bottom breakout in here, held a higher low on the on the weekly, and that trade ran up in that trend for four years. Four years, same trade. Um, so position trading can truly be an awesome method of trading. It, it, it's not something you have to do. It's not something that um, 
um, a lot of people talk about, I guess, but it is one of those things that can be very, very satisfying in trades um, when you um, catch that nice move to the upside. Um, years ago, um, I told everybody about this trade. I picked up a position in uh, Walmart. And if I go back over here, um, because of the, all of my drawings are up here because of um, the split the Walmart did. But I just left the arrows and stuff on there and marked the line straight down. So you can see, if I shrink this back, you'll see there's the red arrow. That's my exit. This was my entry. Into the and if you look across here, how long that trend went to the upside on that trade. And if I go to my 3.8 trap chart on this, and pull that back on the weekly, you're going to find that the entry is really no different. It's exactly a 3.8 trap entry, just on a longer term chart. And everyone knows this because I told everyone about it. When I finally closed this trade, you can see entering over here in 2017 and exiting over here in 2002. this produce this single trade profit okay so if you're willing to hold for a period of time you've got some really good opportunity there to make some serious money and once you get a trade heavily into profit it doesn't require any more work if i if i jump back here to Pfizer, you can see Pfizer setting up a possible 3A trap, right? And how do I know how long Pfizer is going to go up? But I never try and predict it's just going to go up forever. In fact, what I do is I like to find stocks that are way oversold, finally start turning around, pick up an entry. I typically like to find something that pays a good dividend yield. Okay, and then my idea on the trade is, hey, if they only come halfway back, if this only comes halfway back, if that's all it does, you know, a reversion, you've heard reversion to the mean. If it only comes halfway back, I'm going to be absolutely tickled with this trade. Okay, if that just comes halfway back and just reverts to the that mean in the trade so <clears throat> when i'm looking at these charts it's exactly the same patterns that i teach in the three inch trap. there's no difference in it it's just the difference in the time th frame um, sometimes i take it with long-term options jack sometimes i take it with stock almost all the time whether it's stock or options i'm using options in some ways shape or form to hedge or manage this trade. So for example, on Pfizer here, see this red line up here? When this popped up here, I sold the 32 and a half short strike on Pfizer. Okay. Well, that is hedged this entire trade. It's hedged that because I cover it with um, the same amount. Um, and as this rested, consolidated, when we shoot up like that, we're expecting a rest or pullback. So I sell cover calls against it. And if it is a um, stock option position, it's a fig leaf trade. Um, so, and by the way, for anyone that's listening tonight, anyone that's here, um, I'm going to, after doing this class tonight, because there's a lot of details, particularly in the hedging side of things, that can be a little bit difficult to get under your belt. So um, just to let you know, I don't know if Ed's got a link or something for you um, on that, but 
um, tomorrow, um, I'm going to open up right way options um, for everyone. You can come into right way options tomorrow. And if you've got questions on this tomorrow, okay, be happy to answer. Okay, the typical, the live session <clears throat> that I do every single day is come on in the morning. I go for about, well, until about 1030 Eastern. And then I, I've got about a 30 minute break and I come on. And then I'm going to be on from the top of that hour, 11 o'clock Eastern, straight through to 1 p.m. Eastern. So you guys will have access to ask me any question on this tomorrow if you find this is interesting. Um, but you can do them either way in in trades, whether you're a longer term or even a more of a median term. You don't have to go super, super long. Remember, um, what if Pfizer just goes up for three months? Am, do, am I going to have a problem with that? No, not at all. Um, so maybe I go with, you know, a six month option. I don't have to go super, super long term on the trade. I don't have to, but it gives me that flexibility to be able to do that. And because I'm here all the time, because I'm looking at charts all the time, I have that ability to know when I want to add to the trade, when I want to sell calls or maybe reduce the position and manage that trade on through. And I'll tell you guys, it, it's always hardest at the beginning. Okay, It's always the hardest at the beginning. When you get into an entry trade, come into this position right into here. Boom, you get into that trade comes into money really quick. Great, you know, sometimes they don't, but this one did, came into money real quick, sold calls against it. Then it rests or pulls back. It takes back almost all of the money, except for the covered call that's a full profit on the trade. It's hedging that risking, that pullback, which means even though it's pulled all the way back, I have profit in this trade. Okay, and now I'm just waiting to see if this is going to hold this pullback in here and start back up. If it fails, I'll close this trade out. I'm going to make some money, not a lot of money. But I don't have to worry about it so much at all because I'm hedged in the trade. I know where my stop is on it. But I can tell you after a trade has gone up for quite some time and you've got a big profit built in the trade, you just relax. You loosen up your stop loss a little bit. Okay, manage the trade. Um, it's not uncommon for me to go to leap options, Sue. <clears throat> so for example, um, if we were to take a look at um, a couple stocks I was thinking of and now all of a sudden I'm drawing a blank. Um, on those. Um, let's take a look at like, um, no, not FedEx. That's not what I was thinking about. Um, was Ross stores? No, but Ross is setting up. And by the way, you don't have to catch a stock that comes off of the first higher low here off a of bottom. Remember if a, tr if a stock, does it matter if you caught it here or if you caught it here or if you caught it here, does it matter? No, it's just the same pattern following a long-term trend and repeating that pattern as long as it works. So if Roku, or I mean Ross Stores, rests back here and shows that buy signal, can you get in then? Yeah, absolutely. Why, why can't Ross continue up? Look how long it went up here. So you kind of have to base on what your tolerance for risk is, you know, the cost that you put into the trade, how long you want to hold that position, those kind of things. All of those make a difference in your trade. Take a look at MSOS. I'm going to go to this chart here. No, nope. this chart here. 
if you take a look at MSOS, um, this is just starting to come up. Notice it tried right here, did a rounded bottom breakout pattern here on that um, break through the 50, pull back and hold. And if I go to the 3A trap in here on that trade, you can see that held the trap trade. Right? And you've got a potential trade. Well, now it's pulled back and it's fallen underneath that 50 day moving average again. So this trade didn't last that long. You would exit that trade. You'd have a covered call up here to hedge it until you make that exit out here someplace. Say, nay, I no longer want it. But could it do it again here and hold? Yes, absolutely. And one of the things that you're, you're going to find, well, let me just ask you in a, if, if I poll everyone here in the room, how many of you would say it's easier to read a longer term chart than it is a short term chart? Short term charts have all of that noise and the faster you go, the more noise there is in a chart, correct? So long-term charts are pretty darn easy to be able to trade. And there's there's trades all around us and even, you know, really boring stocks. Take a look at Colgate here. How many of you would like to have gotten into Colgate on that first trap entry right here? Very simple. Easy entry into the trade. Doesn't matter if you enter here or here or here or here. You can still follow that trend to the upside. Okay. So entering the trades are pretty simple. Um, and the way I do things, you guys know, I keep things pretty simple. I look for the 3 8 trap. And I look for these breaks of downtrends here. So the stock breaks this downtrend, pushes through, pulls back. And then I'm looking for my entry. Okay. So my entry into the trade is here. And the way I enter that trade is really important, guys. If, if, um, let me just throw this out here like this and I'm going to make sure that that's nice and straight. And let's say this is my entry or my alert into the trade. And you guys look at my charts and you'll see pink lines like that are my alerts. But if I decide my stop loss has to be here based on the price action, well, now I can figure out my risk of the trade and determine whether that's a trade that's OK for me to take. If I have a real volatile chart and it's really wide and choppy, I tend to avoid those. I want these old, uh, not old necessarily, but really stable stock positions to be paying attention to. <coughs> okay, so I want to know how much risk is. That's the first step. Know where your entry is and how much risk you're going to be taking on the trade and make sure it's acceptable because if you get... Um, if you get into a long term, um, if you get into a long term position and you're not comfortable with the risk and you're not familiar with doing these longer term trades, you're going to micromanage it. Okay? You can't, I can't even tell you how many times on my Pfizer trade because everybody's looking at Pfizer on the daily. And they look at the daily chart and they go, Doug, are you still in this trade? And I said, yeah, it hasn't broke my stop loss yet. They, the natural thing is they want, they want to micromanage. Have to break that habit if you want to do longer term ha trades. And I'll tell you, once you get this into profit, once it's up here, it's a whole lot easier to relax and just manage the position.
Okay. It, it's a whole lot easier once you get through that first initial phase and it pushes through, it's into a nice profit and you're working to manage those trades. Okay, so always think about the risk and always think about the timing that you wanna be in this. I know when I first started doing position trading, I just couldn't hold them very long. I looked at trades that that might, you know, last a few months and then I got out. Okay, I pulled the trigger too soon to get out of trades, but it but it doesn't matter. There's an old trade back here in Home Depot that um, everyone in RWO probably remembers that it was a very simple trade. It's over here, marked right here. Very simple trade to the trade, and it just went up. Now, you gotta remember this is a weekly chart. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven before that big ugly candle came in. Eleven weeks. So you're in this trade here. Do you care if you stop out here? No, you stop out with a huge profit on a trade. Okay. Well, the truth is, um, <clears throat> every single morning, all trades that I am in, Bart, is that um, I, I check all the positions I'm in in the morning before the market opens. Okay, so I'm usually looking at those trades and I bounce it against my trade plan. This trade is on, this is what I'm tending to do with it. And if I need to make an adjustment, I make adjustment before the market opens. But after that, if I look at it once a day, it's probably more than enough. Okay. So in trades like this, you can see in a place like that, if you were to just take a trade that was six, three months to six months out, you got that trade made right there. That's easy. Okay, if you take just an option position. Okay. If you um, take a stock position, no, okay, no problem. Take the stock position on the trade and you make buku bucks. You'll make more money with stock than you will options. You won't make as big a, re a big a percentage, but you'll make more money with a stock trade that's equally sized to an option trade. You'll make more money with the stock trade than you'll ever make with options because you make 100%, not just where your delta is in that trade. You'll make a lot more money doing that, okay? Now, selling the call options and doing the management of a trade, if I go back to um, that Pfizer position, and you can see in here I'm short the 32 and a half calls, okay? Now, on that position, those short 32 and a half calls, I have to be thinking about the rallies in the market. When's, if this is the best time to be the buyer, wouldn't you guys say as we're approaching the next area of resistance in the chart, that's the best time to be a seller, correct? So when we stretch up toward a resistance, then I sell out of the money options and they're always short term. Anytime I'm selling out of the money options, they're usually um, 45 days to expiration up to about 30 days to expiration. Somewhere in this range is what I call the sweet spot. You know, if it has to be a 50 day or something like that, sometimes I'll do that um, on that trade. And they're always going to be a delta of right around 30 deltas, okay? Because a 30 delta option says it has a 70% probability of expiring worthless. Okay, 
because I'm trying to bring additional money to this. And when you think about it, let's say, you know, let's say you got into a longer term option here and, and Pfizer's pretty cheap on options. Let's say you paid $7 for a, a long term option on Pfizer. When this expires worthless, you can actually subtract. Let's say you collected only 30 cents for the trade. Okay. Well, now you only owe $6.70 on your position. You've taken that off of the cost of your trade. You can, trader. You're just not going to get very good premium. But yeah, if you're comfortable, and sometimes I do, I go further than 30 deltas because um, I don't get a good setup in the chart or I just really don't want to let the, tr the, the trade go. Okay, So it's fine with me if you want to go out to a 20 delta or something like that to sell premium, but you're not often going to find much premium in those trades. Okay, So, you know, you've got to balance that, right? with those positions. How much premium do you want to collect? What are you trying to do here to hedge? Remember, when we hedge a position, what we're really trying to do is we're expecting it to pull back or consolidate. Okay, So what we're really trying to do is sell some premium that's reducing the pullback or consolidation risk of holding that trade. Uh, Jack, you never ever, yeah, it's something I teach all the time. I never do covered calls. If if these are the patterns that you normally trade in a trend, okay? And if this is close to support in trend is the best time to buy, that is the worst time to be selling premium. Absolute worst time to be selling premium. You want to let that stock move up for you and then look for that next resistance level, that next area up there where you can sell that premium out of the money. Because we know stocks, the most common pattern in the market is the peak and valley. And you can see it in these charts when you look at um, um, that um, Colgate chart. We peak and valley. In the trend, we look at the Mo chart, Altria. Okay, we peak and then we valley. We peak and then we consolidate or valley. And that's how patterns establish. They do the same thing over and over and over. How long do you want to hold the trade? Okay, it's not uncommon for me to go buy an option that's two years out, leap options, two years out. So for example, if, if I were to throw up um, Pfizer here, if that does produce an entry signal, okay, it's a rounded bottom breakout, long-term entry signal, what's wrong with thinking, hey, I'm going to plan on sticking with this for a while, Go to the January 2027s, see if there's any open interest over here, and look at the option prices. There's not great open interest here. Go to the January 2026s. Look at that. 23,000 contracts there. I'm not the only one that thinks this has longer term upside potential. Look for your entry into the trade. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, it's a good question there, Bob. Um, when I'm looking to sell premium, if there's resistance over here on the left, I'm going to be looking for that resistance. 
Okay, so for example, right in here, well here, right in here, this resistance affected the chart right here. So you can see it coming. So when you get up here, sell a covered call above that resistance and just expect that price resistance is going to do its thing. It's going to hold the chart, at least for a period of time. Doesn't always work that way. But if it doesn't work that way and this stock decides it's going to continue to just shoot on up, If it goes up that many days in a row, or that many periods in a row, not days, these are weeks in a row. If it goes up that many times in a row, if I get called away up here, that's fine. Because I just added a whole bunch of money to the trade, and then I'll just wait for the pullback to look for the entry back into the trade. Okay? So if I get called out, it's no problem. No worries on that. But think about what being called away on one of these trades and people panic on this. And something we'll talk about a lot more tomorrow probably if you're in the room. But they panic about being called away here. What, what just happened here? If I get called away up here, somebody just paid me to take the stock at a higher price. Think about that for a second. They just paid me to buy the stock from me at an even higher price. I'm okay with that. And I hope you are too. Because remember, when I'm called away, I get to keep the premium. That's mine. Okay. So I don't really worry about covered calls as long as I set them properly. The last thing you want to do though is you want you don't want to find an entry point into the trade, catch an entry and immediately try to sell a covered call. No, let the stock rally toward the resistance, then sell a covered call. Okay. To hedge the position. Oh, I, if if there is a target up there, Jack, that hits a re, that's coming into a resistance. Yes, I'm watching that resistance. And as we push up there, I'm watching that resistance. Another thing that I like to do is generally it's a general rule. Sometimes you get a lot more extension. We're seeing a lot of that right now in the market. But five to seven periods in the row, so five to seven weeks in a row up good chance a pullback is coming. Okay. That's normal peak and valley pattern action, right? Stocks normally don't go straight up for very long. They go up for a period of time, so I'm looking for a covered call place. If I don't have a resistance here, it's a number of periods up in that move, and then I'm looking for a covered call. There's a few other nuances to that that I um, I'd like to show you and, and teach you, but um, we'd probably not for tonight's class. Okay. So when you're looking for these trades, and, and by the way, um, you know, if you use the 3A trap, okay, it, it doesn't matter if you say a week is just too long for me, I'm going to do a three day chart. Is the trade the same? It's the same. Just a little bit shorter time period. You don't have to use a weekly. If I had a two and a half day chart, I'd show you a two and a half day chart, which is obviously half of a week. That'd be awesome. You can do it that way if you choose to. Okay. What I recommend is you just pick something and stick with it. And what we're looking for when we're looking for these charts is we're looking for that smooth, concise price action in a chart. We want to see stocks that are coming up out of bottoms. 
There's a lot of that going on right now. I mentioned Disney. Disney potentially coming up out of a bottom. Okay, so wait for the trap setup. And you guys probably all know the trap setup from hanging around me as much as you do. You push through, you rest back, you hold, look for your entry into the trade following the trend. Okay, set an alert, wait for the trade to come to you. You're in the position. Now your job is to manage the trade. So let's just draw this out here as an example. Um, if I were, I'm just going to get rid of all of the, all of this stuff on here for a second. If I were to look at this chart and see this breakthrough resistance, this rest or pullback that starts to set up in here, I'm going to set something like a price alert. I'm going to wait for that trade to trigger. Okay. As that stock moves up, I'm going to look up into here and say, boy, there, I'm, I'm coming into some resistance up here right in this area. I'm coming into some resistance. So I'm going to try and sell a covered call beyond this point. Beyond this point. That's my resistance. I want to be above it. So I might be trying to sell a covered call up in this area or even a little bit above if I can get that covered call with the premium I want as we stretch up here because I'm expecting this resistance as it normally does when we stretch up in the market then we find those profit takers at rest it pulls back or consolidates and you repeat and you do it again okay um if you guys know goodson ask goodson about this goodson's back in a trade on nio okay and he, two years ago he ran NIO up and did cover calls, learning this from me in RWO, doing covered calls on the trade to the point that his stock trade was free. It was actually below. He is being paid now to hold it because he'd sold enough covered call premium that it covered the entire cost of his trade. He held that trade for a year and a half or something, made buku bucks in it. Because he used covered calls, he paid off the stock. It was free money in there. And then when he did finally stop out and get out of the trade, he just had a huge profit overall in the position. Okay. And he's picked up another position in NIO. There's this weekly breaking the downtrend in the trade. Okay. If we look at this on a rounded bottom breakout pattern, breaking through that 50, right? So just looking for that longer term position and just imagine if all NIO does is come back halfway. He's going to at least double his money, maybe triple or quadruple it. Okay. So the patterns are identical. It's just that it slows everything down. And if you want to have more time in your trading, you want to have more freedom. That's one of the reasons I became a trader is I wanted more freedom. I want to look for those charts that are getting, you know, that have been terribly beat up. Okay. And I'm looking for that rebound, that comeback the market take a look at PayPal PayPal hammered down hammered down hammered down hammered down okay if we go right here I'm gonna to go to a daily chart you can see that I placed a price alert right there on the daily chart that resting pullback into the pattern I'm looking for a potential entry in this. This is not a 3-8 trap on the daily. But when you look at this on the, on the weekly, that trade is right in here. Okay. 
crossed through resistance, rested back, held support, three stayed above the eight, there's your potential entry. We shot up in the trade. So this shot up into here, there's our resistance. Is there any surprise? We're getting a shooting star here last week. Is there any surprise as we push into the next level of resistance that this might rest and consolidate for a while? <clears throat> you don't really know for sure, Carol. I mean, if there's some big volatility event that occurs in the market, it's going to change your implied volatility of that option. But remember, when you enter a trade, when we looked at Pfizer, okay, and we're looking all the way out here to 473 days, and you've got to put up for a 71 delta option $5.35. Remember, when you buy this, your theta is fixed. Okay? Theta is fixed because you're in the trade. They can't add any more theta to your trade. Certainly, they can add volatility into it, but your theta is fixed from the time of your entry. That makes sense. I can't control the wild gyrations of the market, but my cost doesn't change on the trade. And by the way, notice over here, it's saying that my theta right now is zero. Now that's theoretical. There is some theta decay in there. It's probably just three or four decimal points out. Well, do you ever had do you ever have the entry cost go up after you enter the trade? No, your entry cost stays fixed. You've already paid the theta. Okay, that's not going to change. Okay? Unless you make a change to the trade. Now remember, you can avoid theta altogether and you can control your risk a little bit more if you just buy stock. You don't have to buy a full 100 share contract position by 10 shares. Does it matter? No. Start off with a small position, manage the risk, and then as it grows to the upside, add to the trade. If I'm buying a long-term trade, I'm going to be here. Yes, I'm buying it. If I sell, I'm always selling a short-term option. and I'd be doing that short-term option out of the money here someplace. One of these two options likely that I would sell out of the money. I'm only given those 46 days here or less if I can get it. Okay, but remember, even if I go all the way out here to January 2027, if I choose to buy, let's say, this option right here, everything I pay in theta is fixed. It doesn't change. That's the part that's decaying against you from the time you enter into the trade. It's, it, it, they can't add to it. That's your entry cost. Okay. So the other thing I want you guys to see is this doesn't have to be expensive. Like Pfizer's not really expensive if you buy the options on that trade. You can find there's charts all over the place developing patterns. I'm in a trade on Chewy and Chewy is a profitable trade. I'm also short. 37 and a half calls on Chewy to hedge this pullback. Okay, 
I don't have a super long position in this at the moment. I, let me just go look at my live position. Can't remember exactly. Yeah, I'm just in the January 2025, so I've only got 109 days left. Okay. My short strike on that trade is a 37 and a half. Okay, that 37 and a half trade, because I can give you these exact numbers, I sold for 63 cents. They're worth seven cents now. Okay, so if I buy it back right now, I've made a whopper of a profit on that trade with those covered calls. Okay, so I'm in a position that's profitable and it's resting right now in that trade. And I'm looking for that next potential entry point because if this rests or consolidates and holds, you can see the support area here broke through there. If this holds, rests, sets up that next opportunity and pops, I'll close this to capture my profit, let this run up to the next area resistance, and then be looking to sell covered calls above this next area up here. And just continuing to repeat that over and over and over and over. And guys, um, you never know how long a stock is going to go up. You may have plans that this thing's going to go up for, you know, two years. Okay. But it makes it three months and fails. Are you upset by holding something for three months and closing it out with a nice fat profit? No, we, we never know the future, how long a trade's going to go. Sometimes they just don't go that long. Okay, not what you expect. Something changes in the market. Sometimes <clears throat> they go for a very, very long time. This was an actual trade. That was my entry. That was my exit. I was in that trade from 2013 to almost 2019. Never broke. Okay. And at around 80, out around 225. Okay. Does that make sense? Now remember, if you buy an option and you're running short on time on the option, you can always roll that option, right? You don't have to just close the trade. You can roll that option out and up so you can get more time and more distance on the trade and hopefully do it by taking a profit. So you don't need, an, all the time you don't have to run out and say well i've got to go out and buy two years out no you don't have to do that all the time buy buy something that gives you that length of time that you think it could potentially go and then you can still have that opportunity to roll up and roll out on the trade something i do pretty regularly on these trades if i'm trading them with options I always hedge around earnings, Jack. Yes. I'll explain that really quick, but this requires a little bit more time than what we have for the class tonight. So my method in doing that is before an earnings event comes up, and it's usually a day or two or sometimes the day of, if I have any covered calls, I'm closing those. Because remember, if I'm holding a long trade and this is going to report tomorrow, I'm hoping that gap's way up here, right? I want to take full advantage of that. So I close those trades. Anything that's a covered call that could cap my potential profit, I'm out of them. Okay? And then what I do is I go over to the puts. And I'm usually somewhere between 30 and 60 days out. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid the really big implied volatility of the short-term options, which
which I pay overpay for premium on those, you know, on the real short term options. Okay. Then I'm going to um, um, buy a put that guarantees. Remember, when you buy a put and you're holding a long term position that's in profit, there's no there's no sense trying to protect a trade if there's no profit in it. Close the trade, get out of it. Okay, but if there's a profit that you're trying to protect, if I set if I there wouldn't be probably one available, but if I sold a 27 strike Chewy put option and this reports earnings and gaps down here. And if I've already, let's say I've already got 500 bucks profit in this trade, that right there is going to guarantee me that $500 profit. Because all I have to do is execute my put. I have the right to sell it at $27 a share. And I close the trade. If the trade does gap and run to the upside, remember I have an equal size position here. So I've got a position that's either in stock, which is 100% delta or 100 deltas for every, one delta for every share I hold, or I'm in a position that's already up I've got 70 or 80 upside deltas, and this is a 30 delta. So I'm going to lose some money on the put if it gaps up. But I go over here and close this out. It's like buying insurance for the trade. Close that out, capture back what I can capture back on that big stretch up here. Now I consider that big stretch up. Maybe I want to sell some covered calls. I do that a lot. And on those covered calls I sell, as that what usually happens on those big gaps. As a general rule, they're going to rest or pull back, right? Take a look at um, MU here on the daily. Had that big gap up on earnings and it rests or pulls back. Okay, so as it rests or pulls back, you're making money on the short call that you sold on this after the gap up. It worked in your favor, it rests or pulls back wait for the buy signal to show up, close that trade, you've probably covered your loss on the put for buying that insurance for the short period of time. Okay. <clears throat> now you probably need more explanation than that because most people, unless you're experienced in options, go, okay, now my head's gonna blow up. I'm not sure what to do. But trust me on this, when you start doing it and practice it, it's pretty easy, it's pretty simple um, after a period of time. Okay, um, Brad, yes, I generally sell covered calls to cover the entire position. As a general rule, I'm wanting to sell, I'm wanting to cover the entire position. Now there would be a reason that I might sell a partial, okay? Let's say I feel like I've got too much of this position and I'm carrying too much risk of a pullback. I might sell a covered call that's at the money or even in the money for a partial position so that I could, somebody executes that and closes me out of that trade. Instead of me making the decision to close the trade, I'm going to have it move up into a into a resistance area, get called away on a portion that guarantees me out, and I get paid to get out of the trade. If I just feel like I need to reduce that position size. Right? Um, Trader X and uh, um, tonight is not about me looking at charts for you. It's about position trading and it's about how to manage those positions okay so I'm going to stay on that subject in here so that we can stay on track okay so when we're looking for trades and how many in here have taken the classes on the 3 trap and just know the 3 trap it's pretty easy setup to do okay you can find something that's coming up out of the bottom. You can find something that is already started in a trend and just wait for the next entry. 
into the position. Okay. I mean, think about it, guys. How many times have you looked at a chart and went, oh my gosh, how am I not in that trade? Anybody felt that way with NVIDIA? How, how is it that I'm not in that trade? It, it didn't matter if you caught this entry. That doesn't matter whether you caught that entry or whether you catch this entry or whether you catch this entry or this one. It doesn't matter. How about the one that might be coming here? I don't know if this will come, but there's a downtrend with a higher low, a possible trend breaking through. If that holds in here and pops through, okay, like coming out of a downtrend holding the first higher low. Okay, you can find your way into trades that are already in trends because you never know how long a trend will last. You know, take an example of Microsoft. I made a big mistake on Microsoft over in here. We were in this in right way options in this area in here. And it ran up and it ran up. We made a 106% return on the trade doing it with covered calls. And I let the calls call away because we were up so big. I said, let's just let them have it. Let's just cut it loose and let them have it. But then it just kept going up. Okay. So then you got to figure out, do I want to get back in that trade? You never know how long a trade's going to go to the upside. You never know. Okay. Yes, if you're holding a, a longer term option, Bart, what happens when you own the stock, remember, that's why we call it a fig leaf. When you own an option and you're doing covered calls with it, it's really better qualified as a fig leaf trade because you have you own the right to buy the stock you don't own the stock right so when your short when your short strike is exercised and you get notified by the broker hey somebody exercised that short strike you owe them the stock just exercise your long calls okay you exercise your long calls it it happens you don't even see it Okay, you exercise your long calls, the, the stock comes into your account, it immediately goes out to the person who bought it at that price. If you own straight stock, you don't have to worry about it. It just goes out. You, you don't have that step of having to exercise your contracts. And don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how much money is in your account. If, if you were allowed to be in that trade at all, you don't have to worry about, oh, I got a thousand shares of NVIDIA. I can't afford to, to suddenly take possession of that. You don't. You have the right to buy them. You execute that trade. Someone's already called them away and it goes straight to them. Okay. <clears throat> now, when I look at when you look at a stock like Microsoft here, guys, do you see a potential trap trade that could be coming here on Microsoft? Could you do the same thing here? Yeah, if you like Microsoft and this is the trade you want to be in, that could be an entry into the trade. And what if it only does this, just like it did here? Rest consolidates and then pops one, two, three, four, five weeks. And you say, that's plenty, I'm out. You're gonna make more money than you've ever made in a swing trade. Trust me on that, you will. Okay? You can see the charts are easy to read. It's easy to find the patterns. But you can also find lots of stocks that have been beaten down, right? I don't think PayPal, they've made some major mistakes, but I don't think PayPal is going to go away. So find your entry into the trade and run the trend. 
how long will it go? Take a stock like SQ. Look how far that thing ran. Now it's been beaten back down here to this price. I actually have a small position on SQ. I have a small starter position in the trade. I'm not trying to do anything fancy here. And small for me, um, it may not be small for you, but I own 100 shares of SQ. That's just a starter position to me I'm waiting to see. If this sets up a bullish pattern, then I'll add to the trade. And by the way, I can own 100 shares, or if it's 10 shares or one share, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I can hold, hold 100 shares and then buy 10 contracts. Okay, I'm just looking for my entry into the trade. So oftentimes I will nibble into a position and just wait for the entry. Okay, just nibble because it's on your radar. You don't have to put a lot of money into it. Buy a share, buy five shares, 10 shares. Just nibble into the trade and wait for the position to set up. So for example, guys, I missed that trade on PayPal here. I, did, I missed the entry. I talked about it in the room, but I missed the entry. Okay, I'm not gonna chase it. I'm gonna wait for the next entry. I hold a whopping 10 shares of PayPal, okay? 10 shares of PayPal. My current profit on those 10 shares in PayPal, when you look at the percentage, I'm up 13%. You don't have to go in big. And then you can slowly add to the trade and build that position because you're paying attention to that longer term chart. Now, here's a real key thing to be paying attention to okay, for a longer term chart. Always manage the trade from the longer term chart. Okay. Yes, Ed, if you would, I'd appreciate it. Always, always manage that trade from here because if you micromanage with the daily chart, you're gonna mess yourself up, okay? Know what it is that you're doing with the trade, follow your plan. And trust me on this, when you first started, guys, you're going to have some fits and starts. You'll make some money, um, that kind of thing. You'll you'll do pretty well on, on some trades, but some trades won't do very well because you'll micromanage yourself out. You get, you get frustrated with it. It takes a little bit of time to build that patience to say, no, look, I'm just, I'm just worried about this trade here. Like I said, this Pfizer trade, I cannot even tell you how many times I've been asked by people in the room, are you still holding that trade? I'm still holding that trade. Okay. Yeah, everyone's invited tomorrow to come over into the RWO room. Grab that link, guys. It's free tomorrow. You'll be able to ask a lot of these questions tomorrow about, um, about this. And we can go into a little bit more detail in a two-hour session on longer-term positions. And we can even talk a little bit about the possibility of using Heiken Ashi because Heiken Ashi helps a lot of people avoid the micromanagement in trades. So when you're looking at these charts, and guys, they're just as easy to find. If you guys use the LTA scanner, and I really recommend the LTA scanner. If you guys don't have it, Ed, post a link for the LTA scanner. Go take a look at it. It's it's like easy money, okay? Um, because it just brings trades to you. If you want the rounded bottom breakout pattern and you want it on the weekly, it'll just bring you stocks that have weekly rounded bottom breakout patterns. It, 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 it's so easy to find these trades. Okay, it's the exact same patterns. It's the exact same 3A trap. It's everything is the same. 
It's just longer term. Okay. Now, here's one of the selling points that I think is really important for people to do longer term trading like this position trading, because I know there's probably some in here thinking, I don't ever want to do that. I'm a fast trader. I got to do it fast. Of everybody in the room here right now, is there anybody that in your swing trading account, you have more than 50% of your money in the market at any one time? Anybody in here that says, yep, I have more than 50% of my overall swing trade account in the money? Yeah, most people are gonna say just what Bart said, not even close, no way. I don't do that myself. So what does that mean? That means you have a lot of cash sitting in your account doing nothing. Nothing. Can you set aside a portion of that cash, that capital that's doing nothing, and maybe pick up some longer term trades? Small positions, I don't care if it's 10 shares. and utilize that capital better, put that capital to work in something that you don't have to manage every single second of the day. Okay, you do wanna pay attention to the trend, support resistance, you wanna pay attention when it's gonna report earnings. Okay, I don't recommend you try to get into a long-term trade just before it reports earnings. But after it reports earnings, it's fair game, right? You got three potential months that you could get some nice profits in it before that next earning event comes around. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Carol, um, imp implied volatility is going to change with the market. Um, but remember, you're fixed in the price of your trade. And if, if you trade stock, you have no implied volatility to worry about. Okay, zero implied volatility to worry about. Okay, but if you're in options and longer term options, again, your theta is set by your entry price. Theta is the only thing that's affected by implied volatility. If you're happy with the implied volatility on your entry here, it doesn't matter if implied volatility spikes to 100. Your price is set. They don't adjust that. You're in the trade. Now the volatility may change a lot and cause you a little bit of heartache and concern but your cost of entry into the trade doesn't change, okay? Now, when it comes to slope, those kind of things, I do think there is such a thing, um, I don't call it slope, I call it amplitude, okay? When you're looking at an old chart like BDX over here and you're seeing that long-term trend, notice that that right there is a pretty simple, steady, upside trend okay not too many surprises nothing's really going on there just stay with the trend you know when you look at Microsoft that's a pretty simple upside trend right just follow it okay and it doesn't matter even if this gets wild volatility around earnings or something like that, it doesn't change your trade because you're already in it. Your theta does not increase. Okay, your covered call trading, you might actually get some advantage out of a theta, theta increase to bring in more premium when the theta is high on your covered calls. Okay. Now again, I'm not telling you guys to go out, and I wanna be really clear on this, I'm not telling you guys to go out and just start immediately buying up long-term positions. <clears throat> start small and just take a portion of the cash that you have just sitting there doing nothing. 
and start working yourself into some trades. And it doesn't have to be catching the first entry off the bottom to be successful. Okay, it doesn't require that. It doesn't require you to hold these forever. You can choose at any time when that thing has got a really nice profit in it, you know, that's enough. I'm getting nervous. Close the trade. Doesn't matter. Okay. You're not because you get into a long-term option. You buy a, an option that goes all the way out to January 2027. Doesn't mean you can't close it three months later. If the profit is right and you feel like it's time to do it. If you catch a trade, however, if Microsoft did something like this, come up out of this area right in here and then just went up like that. Okay, now I'm concerned. There's a high probability that this is going to pull back and pull back hard. It got overextended. Okay, so for example, when you take a look at something like Baidu here recently, going straight up. Okay, if that continued to go straight up here on the weekly, that's going to be a problem for me. Because the amplitude of that move got too steep, just like right there. And I'm going to be tightening up spot-ops. I'm going to be watching that carefully. Because as that moves up, just keep moving that stop up. It can get really excited for a period of time. But then notice it came down and it took it all back and then some. So if that amplitude of the move is just way too steep, okay, sudden changes and it's just ripping, We'll just tighten those stops up, let that trade go as long as you feel comfortable with it, and close it because you're up big in the trade. <clears throat> okay. Shorter duration, Carol. Just like any other option, if you bought a one day or a five day option, the five day options will go up a bigger percentage than, than your November's will because of the duration of the trade. Okay, The profit in that short term move is going to explode the shorter term options. It's going to be slower in the longer term options. Remember the longer term options, we're just trying to mimic a longer term trade. Okay. Shorter term options, if you get an explosive move, will always do better than the longer term. That's just the nature of options. Okay. But they'll still have nice profits in both of them. Um, Gary, I think so. You know, um, like, well, like for example, that PayPal. <clears throat> I've got 10 shares of it. Okay, I'm just going to be waiting for the next entry now. Okay, I can, if I never find an entry and PayPal goes up 50% of where I bought it from, do I care? I mean, I'm going to hate myself because I didn't buy any more of it, but I'm still going to have a great profit, right? Percentage is a percentage. Doesn't matter if it's one share or a thousand shares. Percentage is the same. Okay, so buying a small position or nibbling in is what I call it looking for that entry into the trade. So it's always on your radar. It's in your portfolio. You look at it every day. It's on your radar. You're going to pay attention to that chart. Hopefully you'll catch that next entry into the trade. So I do exactly the same thing as I always do. I'm, I'm always in the money and I'm going to be somewhere around 70 deltas. Always. I don't care if it's a short-term option or a long-term option.
I'm going to be in the money somewhere around 70 deltas. Now in leap options, sometimes <clears throat> you're either going to be, you'll find an option that, well, it's going to be a 67 delta or you've got to go to an 81 delta. I'll take the 67. Okay. But I don't go down into the really cheap ones. <clears throat> okay. The reason is I want to get paid for my work. If I believe the technical analysis says that this is about time for this to move, I want to get paid for that. I don't want to buy an option that doesn't provide good profit. Okay. So it's going to be the same. Okay. I'm always looking for that sweet spot of entry into the trade. Okay. So utilize your 3A trap. Look for those entries on longer term charts. Use your round of bottom breakout charts. Look for those charts that could be setting up that longer term break to the upside. Okay. That push you can see here on the daily or on the weekly, well, there's nothing there yet, right? So that's not something you're going to be worried about. But there's trades <clears throat> out there all over the place that you might want to be worried about or thinking about. Catch that round and bottom breakout right there. Money. And they're easy to read, they're easy to find. So that answered your question on that. <clears throat> Remember guys, this isn't rocket science. You can pick any option that you choose. I choose to pick options that are gonna pay me well if my direction is right, because I trust my analysis. Okay, if I don't trust my trade strategies or my analysis, I might do something different, but I trust my analysis because I've done it for so long. If the pattern sets up, I'm looking for the entry. And I never take trades that have a high risk to the stop. I just avoid them. I just won't take it. Okay? If it's too volatile, it's too weird, it's whipping all over the place, I don't want any part of it. That's not a long-term trade for me. Okay? So I'm looking for those very simple entry trades. And by the way, a lot of my long-terms, guys, <clears throat> I like to find those long terms that pay dividends. Okay, <clears throat> because you get the added benefit if you buy the stock, that is. If you buy the stock, you get the added, be added benefit of the return that comes in on those trades. Take a look at a stock like AT&T. This pays 5% dividend yield. Find your way into that trade and you're collecting dividends as well. It's not too expensive for a lot of people to trade this. And again, it doesn't matter if you hold 10 shares, you still collect the dividend. If you hold one share, you collect the dividend. Okay, you're holding this long term, you're loaning your money to them for a long time, they need to pay you for it, right? So I love to have those longer term trades pay me something nice. You can even look at things like deferred, I mean not deferred, preferred ETFs. PFF pays a dividend every month. Okay, you can look at utilities. Look at how utilities have been moving up. Pick something like energy transfer and look for your entry in here almost an eight percent dividend yield look for something like ung or find a natural gas a true natural gas play that's been completely beat down when it starts coming back up 
take your opportunity in it. Okay. Are you looking on the daily or the weekly, Carol? Okay. I'll do this because we're finishing up. Um, soft subject here. But for me, the, the trend's pretty easy to see. Here's your low, there's your higher low, there's your current trend. There's a gap fill resistance supports down here. You have a little bit of price support that's being built right here because we crossed up through it. But don't be surprised, we cross through a resistance that could rest back to the trend. Pretty stretched in the short term. I would expect a rest is coming. So if I were long this trade, guess what? Looking for covered calls up here. Well, Trader X, I mean, you don't know. She may be in it from here. Okay, she may not be looking for an entry here. She's already in it. So it may be way better profit than what you're thinking about their PLTR. Don't judge someone else's trade until you know where they're at in the trade. I don't, I have no idea where she's, if she's in it or waiting for the trade. Oh yeah, I forgot Brad picked up HBI, told everybody about it in the trading room too. HBI, that was the alert for the entry. Okay, this is a weekly rounded bottom breakout. There you go. And you're still in that, aren't you, Bert? Yeah, you're still in that. Beautiful. What if HBI just goes halfway back up? holy cow right break through this resistance rest for a little bit and then just keep moving motivated on up yeah to be really happy and collecting dividends along the way right by the way guys you can do this with even index charts it doesn't have to be an individual stock it doesn't take a look at something like moo An ag ETF weekly round of bottom breakout starting to occur. Can you do it with Moo? Of course you can. It's always the same. Thank you, Terry. Remember, tomorrow RWO is open, free to the public. Make sure you grab that link. If you forget about it, just come to the website. You'll be able to get in. No password for tomorrow. And all of these questions that you probably have rattling around in your head or you'll think about tonight, you'll have plenty of time to ask me those questions tomorrow. Okay? Plenty of time. So um, we'll have... We'll continue this conversation tomorrow and um, love to see you guys tomorrow in the RWO room. Check it out. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Start making just a consideration whether this would be good for you, where you could utilize some of that capital a little bit better without having to have so much work. I saw someone said short-term trading is just so tiresome. It is. It wears you out. It's very stressful. The shorter time you go, the more stressful it becomes. The longer term, if you look for those good quality charts, it really doesn't, it doesn't have to be that stressful. And you can really put in some great profits. And by the way, one other thing is if the market just absolutely falls apart in tanks, don't, don't worry about it. Okay, 
because you're going to find great stocks that get driven way down in price and then it's like shooting fish in a barrel it's easy stocks will just get hammered to the downside on a major correction in the market look for those coming back up and it's easy pickings like i said it's it's like shooting fish in a barrel You'll never have an easier time to make money on longer term trades because everything suddenly is a value trade. It's a Warren Buffett trade, right? Good stocks, underpriced, value trade, hold. All right. You guys take care. Have a good evening. Thanks so much for being here, listening and putting up with me. And I'll see a lot of you tomorrow, I hope, in the RWO room. Take care. Have a great one. Thanks, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.